Meeting webinars are a way you can raise some cosmic dust in your market in a way that never seemed possible before. You can bring people together virtually uh, who might never come together in person. There are lots of ways of doing that. Let's take a, take a look at a different number of ways we can use uh, meetings in real estate uh, and, and create meeting webinars. Uh, franchises use meetings to talk to franchise owners um, across very, very large areas, across the country, across the continent, around the world, you know, in a region. Uh, a webinar is a great place to bring people together to talk about common goals, common strategies. Uh, it's a great, great tool for a franchise. Um, a brokerage can use online meetings uh, when you have a multi-office situation, you know, bring together managers, bring together uh, department heads, bring together staff and independent contractors. Um, within a brokerage, you know, have a sales meeting. Not all real estate agents come to sales meetings, can come to sales meetings. People have really, really uh, conflicting schedules that don't make it real possible to come together, and webinars make that possible. Um, agent teams, you know, it's the same thing. Agent teams, you've got people, different people responsible for different uh, things. You may have them located all around town. Being able to have a meeting, a virtual meeting, where people can, can stay in their own office or do it from their own home office saves people time in, uh, in travel. You know, half an hour each way in a car to go to a meeting is an hour that people have to carve out of their day. There are just so many times that you can do that and, uh, you know, and not really cost people productivity and, and ultimately, uh, you know, hit the bottom line. So working with webinars in teams is a real, real great idea. Uh, you can create an advisory group. Uh, think about an advisory group with people in your market, people in your geographic market who may be able to, to help you, uh, you know, reach out uh, and reach more people, people in your demographic market. You know, it's a real, real great way to, to, to share intelligence, share information about the market with an advisory group. And an advisory group can meet online. Um, create a roundtable. Talk about best practices about any area of your business. Uh, you know, create a roundtable and have a discussion about about foreclosures, have a discussion about short sales, have a discussion about the best practices that are that are happening. You know, create those roundtables, uh, you know, pass the microphone around from one person to another. Um, share. You can do that much more easily, much more frequently, um, and in a very, very rich manner with webinars. Um, create seminars. Create seminars, in-house seminars for agents, in-house seminars uh, and trainings for your uh, for your other groups. Again, you know, do that in a meeting format. Customer education. You know, when you're doing this in this kind of a format, that's different than a sales webinar. You know, when you're creating customer education and having meetings, you're inviting a very, very special, rich type of interaction with your consumers, you know, with those, uh, with those people who are, you're bringing into your business as prospects and future customers that you were never able to do before. In a way, you were never able to do it um, and, and do that virtually. Very, very rich way of working with webinars. Let's take a look. Let's take a look at a team meeting cycle and, uh, and an example of how this meeting webinar can work in a real estate team. So we've got a, got a couple of agents who, who have a team going. Let's call them G, Jill and Jack. And, uh, and Jill and Jack are going to schedule a meeting later in the week with their team. They've got some, um, some listing agents. We've got some buyer's agents, a couple of transaction coordinators. And, uh, and they're going to be meeting later in the week. Uh, they may even invite their VAs to, to come in. They've got a couple of those. Uh, Jill and Jack are going to put together a detailed agenda. And, uh, and they've, uh, you know, working, again, they're working with a team. That's, that's a very, very busy team. Uh, three of the members of that team are on the road right now. Uh, one of those members is out of town on, at a conference. And, and that person is going to attend via, uh, via an iPhone. I'm sorry, or, or an iPad or, or an Android tablet. So that's pretty cool. Uh, one of the members of the team is going to register with his iPhone, and, uh, and one, another member is not going to be able to attend, uh, but he can catch it on the replay because everything is going to be recorded. 
Uh, Jill and Jack are going to assign a password for the meeting. There are definitely some things they don't want to be sharing with the world and ne- or necessarily with, with other people who have other, you know, access to other rooms in their meeting space there. So they're going to record that for their team and, 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 and uh, ask people to use a password. They're also going to upload documents for review prior to the meeting. Um, every member of the team has an opportunity to review those documents and then post comments uh, you know, below the uh, the space in the collaborative meeting area so that uh, they can start getting on the same page prior to the meeting. During the meeting, the team leader is going to present a PowerPoint uh, with a succinct outline of all of the major points, all of the points he wants to talk about, and then, uh, and then team members are going to share other documents in the meeting space. So people who have uh, information relative to the, you know, to the projects, you know, germane to uh, uh, to the task at hand, we'll be able to share that. Uh, they're also able to add additional people to the to the space during the week. Uh, they may invite some other people in. There may be a, a lender who is going to be joining a an open house promotion and be available at a uh, at an open house to do some pre qualifying. Maybe has a team to do that as well. Um, they are able to schedule recurring meetings. Maybe they have just figured out that that would be a very, very cool thing to do, to have recurring meetings um, at the same time every week, and they can do that very, very quickly. Um, all members have access to the recordings and the files, and they have access on demand. So the entire fo- uh, recording of the meeting uh, is available. If people want to listen to it again, uh, listen to a certain part of it, they can do that, and they can download those files again. Uh, team members who are working on a project, uh, who are working in Excel or working in Word or working in, uh, you know, in, in another document may have some thoughts as they're working on it. They can start an instant meeting right in, and, and jump right into that collaborative meeting area right from those documents, right from within those documents, and, uh, and start an instant meeting with another person on their team just like that. Sharing files was never easier than it is right now in a meeting webinar. People within a group, within a meeting webinar, can collaborate to create presentations and reports right online. Um, you can create a file in a media library. You can you know, create an entire library of materials that people on your team can use that you can take out of the file at any given point in time during a meeting webinar to, uh, to present to the group, to, to review with the group, and, and, to, and to work with. Uh, you know, they're, they're those same files are files that may be contract files. You can have a meeting again with, uh, with clients. You can be presenting a, um, uh, a contract for, for a buyer to, or a seller to review uh, before signing. Uh, you can be presenting your listing contract, for goodness sake. Anyway, you can create a media library and do that in the file. Um, you can assign and uh, privileges and permissions to people so that only some people can uh, can make changes on a contract. And you can leave messages for people in a meeting space, you know, kind of like putting a uh, uh, you know a sticker on a on a bulletin board. You can create your own virtual bulletin board right in your meeting space. Uh, team members can share their relevant emails in a meeting space. Uh, lots of engagement happens there. Uh, People with it, you know, with a high level of permission to, uh, you know, to, to run the room, you know, a room monitor, a, you know, a virtual room monitor can have a, uh, can have a list and create a list for, of people who can share certain materials. Um, you may have a team uh, or a room where you invite strategic partners. You may invite people from, from a title company, from, you know, from the lending community, from, uh, from the housing counseling community. You may have different levels of permissions for different people to share different documents depending upon the project uh, in which you're, you're engaged. Uh, you can share updated files and notes about changes. Uh, you know, final files can, con- can contain history notes. You can lock them. So file management in a, in a meeting space is very, very great. Uh, you know, and the other neat thing that's very, very neat with the way the technology is emerging is the way that you can use mobile applications uh, in, in, in webinars. And people now, you know, are, are signing in and attending webinars on their smartphones. They're using the, iP- they're using the iPad 
to, uh, you know, to attend webinars on a lot of platforms and they're using the Android tablet. So mobile applications are bringing people together. You can have your meetings, um, you know, with people all over the place and they don't even have to, you know, be sitting at a computer. They can be working someplace in a remote area using a mobile device and, and still be able to participate, still be able to see what you have to share, still be able to review documents and do all of that type of interaction right from their tablets or their smartphones. One of the things you hear me talk about these days, and, and I talk about it a lot, is cross-channel marketing. And cross-channel marketing is a way, uh, and, and a way of thinking and a way of running your business that that uh, that is about integrating your platforms making one kind of technology work with another kind of technology you know use what you have and 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 make it better and more efficient it's not about using a lot of different things separately you know a lot of multiple platforms everywhere that is very very hard that gets very confusing and uh, and it's very very time consuming um, using productivity tools um, in a webinar a uh, situation is a perfect example of, of really making the best of technology. Um, you already have some kind of email client. You're already using Outlook or some other type of, uh, of email client, calendar client. When you can schedule a meeting right from that email client, right from your calendar, you know, you're, you're going to be two steps ahead of everybody else. Uh, be able to uplo upload documents to a meeting space. Uh, being able to start and join meetings right from your calendar uh, and uh, and being able to initiate meetings you know right from within a document as you're creating a word document as you're creating a PowerPoint or as you're creating an Excel spreadsheet when something comes up and uh, and you need to have some kind of interaction with a team member or a strategic partner or somebody um, and you can do that and initiate that contact right from that document, that's going to make your life a whole lot easier at the end of the day. When you're making it easier, when you're working more efficiently, when you're able to be more effective, that's when you see dramatic results in your business. And that, you know, ultimately, uh, you're going to see dramatic results in your bottom line.